All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I have, I'm very excited for my guest today. He's an old high school friend of mine, Andy Waldron. And he's here with me right now to talk about some of his personal finance decisions and journeys through life, I guess, since we've parted ways. And it's exciting to have him because we grew up together and we had a lot of, you know, we grew up in the same town. We were good friends. Social economic levels, we were probably on similar playing fields. I think I might have been a little bit lower on the totem pole than him with my family. But... Uh, but looking back, it's very fun because we came from. It's very, it's very interesting to see, I guess, the different choices we've made because we came from very similar upbringing, um, and uh, so he. I'm excited to have him on today, and he actually has great news. He just got engaged um, this last week. Was it? Was it Sun? Wait, when was it? Last Sunday? About a week and a half ago now. A week so. and a half ago. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Con- you. Congratulations. Super Big life changes and yep. Looking a lot forward of. To it. Uh, harder financial decisions coming in the future probably i'm sure (laughs) um but yeah so i'd like to start out by asking you um what has been what looking back on your last however many years post high school and stuff like that what has been one of your one of the smartest financial decisions you've made um you know there's been a lot uh you know since high school but uh I moved, uh, I grew up and lived in New York uh, until I was 29 and decided um, to get out of New York uh, for a job, for a change, and uh, moved down to Virginia, uh, and that was uh, in 2006, and, you know, right around, you know, the peak of the market kind of area, and, uh, you know, I I started my job down here actually teaching and kind of watched the market and things were up high. didn't know how I'd ever afford a a house in the northern Virginia area. Uh, Very expensive to live here. And so I kind of watched the market. And, you know, when things crashed, uh, I I jumped on. You know, I started looking at houses. Uh, I looked at about 75 different ones with my realtor and, you know, short sales and foreclosures and and things like that. And and I really just, I held on and I waited for the right deal. And, uh, you know, I got into this house, uh, uh, townhouse. It, it certainly needed a lot of work, but most of the work I knew I could do myself. I, I'd become pretty handy, and uh, I got it at a fantastic price. Um, you know, it was well under half of what it would have peaked at um, at the peak of the market. So that was huge for me. And uh, you know, I got in and I, and I put some money in it. And, you know, some new carpets, furnace, AC, a bunch of paint, and you know, I, I did it for relatively cheap. But uh, doing that, really focusing in on it for about a year or two, putting some money into it, uh, it turns out that five years later. Um, you know, I, I, it's it's worth probably almost seventy five thousand dollars more. So that was nice. you know buying at the right time, putting some money into it, living in it. You know, I had roommates at the time. Uh, it's been one of the best investments I, I've made. Um, I'm looking forward to making some more, but uh, it's worked out fantastic. And I bought the house knowing that I was going to live there, possibly with roommates. Uh, it's a place that I could grow into with a family. Um, you know, wife, kids, whatever I needed. Uh, centrally located in the area. It's near. Um, you know, public transportation. So I knew it was it was the ideal place to live in, to grow in, and you know ultimately to um, to rent out. Awesome, awesome. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a point where you owned this house where you actually were just renting it out fully, and you were living with a neighbor or someone up the street from you. Yes, uh, I kind of uh, after about I think it was about two years. Um, I had racked up some credit card debt uh, for the house. Um, you know, I put my furnace and carpet and everything I financed on the credit card. Because when I bought the house, I kind of bought more than I could afford, and, and yeah. I didn't give myself enough money to fix up the house. So that all went on the credit card, and so I got to the point where I either, you know, I needed to do something about it, and I thought long and hard about it, and um, yeah, I ended up renting out the house for a full year, and um, what I did was I lived with a friend. I, I paid rent rel- relatively low, but um, and the nights when I wasn't working my full-time job and on the weekends, I actually built a um, basement apartment at a friend's house. Wow. So kind of the deal was that I would build this basement apartment. I could live there for a year. If I didn't save in there for a year, um, I would get the income for it. So I ended up by doing that, saving money. I wasn't paying you know, my whole mortgage. I was living cheap. And then for a while, I was living free with this whole deal we had worked out. So I was able to pay down my credit card, got up to, I think, about twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars Oh, wow. It was huge. It's daunting. I could not pay it back in my current financial situation. And it was tough to go from a, a very large, nice house down into living into a bedroom. But, you know, I did it for some time, paid off, and I paid off my credit cards completely. Um, so I was credit card debt-free. Uh, 
you know, and I moved back into my house. Things were fantastic. Um, I was able to live there on my own. Um, I got roommates from time to time for a couple months at a time just to get a little bit extra income. But other than that, um, you know, one of the best decisions I made after buying the house um, and, you know, the only way I was really going to get out of debt without losing my house. Um, so a huge, huge decision to make, but one of the best that I did make. Awesome. Awesome. Good for you. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, what would you say has been one of the worst financial decisions you've made? Um, you know, I, uh, I, I think uh, I was probably about 26 when I bought my first house. You know, I thought I was being smart about that. Um, you know, but you know, I lived there for a couple of years, sold it, you know, didn't really do too well on that. And, you know, so I, yeah, I, I bought two houses. The first one didn't really get me anywhere. The second one did. Um, so housing, you know, I mean, the first one wasn't horrible. The second one's been, been great. But really my, my biggest um, mistake, I think, financially was not one particular mistake, but it was a variety of mistakes starting when, you know, really when we met in high school was, um, you know, and I think even when we met or shortly after we met, I got a really good job uh, working on commission in a, a retail electronic store. And I was making a ton of money and way more than any of my friends and you know, I was one of the, my few friends that had a car, and yeah. I was just making a ton of money, and I was buying all sorts of CDs, going to concerts, and going out to eat, and traveling, and I was just dropping money left and right because I had it. You know, I was living yeah. at home. I didn't have any bills. I didn't have any debt um, other than my car, which I should have paid off, but um, just dropping all that money, you know. I mean, I just think back that I was doing that for so long. Uh, all the money that I could have saved, I could have invested. I could have paid off my car. I could have had a better car. I could have saved money for college, for the future. Um, and really that kind of started it when I started working, just not saving kind of, you know, followed me along. I always kind of lived life at a bit of a higher standard than I should have. I should have invested more and not bought of as much of the junk that I really bought that, you know, I look back and I'm like, you know, what did I do with all this stuff? You know, yeah. what did it, you know, it was, it was a waste. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's sad to see, but I think we, a lot of us don't have that good financial direction, especially early on. I mean, and there is kind of a coming too that needs to happen with a lot of people. And it sounds like it took you maybe a little bit longer to hit that point where you realized at the it end. Did. But um, you know, and it, it was really much later in life that I, that I realized that. And you know, growing up, um, you know, my parents were divorced, but they were never really all that strapped. And my dad would go out and buy electronics and you know, new cars and this and that and. You know, that's what I knew and that's what I did I mean you know I, I followed in their footsteps exactly you know I, I didn't know any better and that's what I did and you know unfortunately that's caused me some issues and you know I could have been much um, further along financially if I would have started investing and if I would have been taught to do that uh, at an earlier age and I, you know I really thought I was doing all right saving a little bit of money but for what I was making I should have been saving you know probably 75 percent of that or more yeah yeah well, great. Well, thank you so much for those stories today. Um, I, this is going to be the part one. We are definitely going to have a part two and follow up with that. Follow up with some more stories, maybe even some more personal stories between you and I. Uh, Sounds financial good. and stuff like that. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Glad to help. All right. Well, you have a good one, and we will see, see more too. of you soon. All right.